May have begun without drama, but the wheel of justice for the victims of abuse in the hands of the police has started to roll. In Lagos, which is the epicenter of the recent NSARS protests, the judicial panel of inquiry set up by the state government began sitting today. After the swearing in of the two youth representatives, Runu Odulala, Temitokwe Majikodumi, and Lucas Koyojo, representing the Human Rights Commission. Thereafter, the panel called its first petitioner, Okoli Agawu, to give his testimony. Our correspondent, Victoria Idowu, reports. It's day one, and with a complete quorum, the panel set up by the Lagos State Government to look into uh, allegations of police brutality by the disbanded SARS unit had its first sitting today. Aye. With the two youth representatives, Rinu Odulala and Temitokwe Majekodumi, and a representative from the Human Rights Commission, Lucas Koyejo, sworn in, the panel is set to sit. Led by retired Justice Doris Okobi, the panel walks in as the kick starts the seating. Okobi Agu, Abu Nike, Bessons, Federal Special Antiterrorist South. The first petitioner is called to testify. I, swear by Almighty God, swear by Almighty God. According to him, his ordeal with the SARS operators started in the year 2012. I spent about 40, about 47 days with SARS at Ikeja. When they did all sorts of things to me, they tortured me. I even know two of their names. One is Inspector Sunday, they call him Baba Ijakba. The other one is ACP Haruna. They call him Baba Gana. So I don't know, they, the torture was just too much. They suspended me, they tore my clothes, used my singlet, hung on my neck, put up a bucket of um, cement that bended me like this. A lot of things anyway. I still have some scars all over. They took over my house, they sold my car. They took over some properties, in, even my belongings inside my house, my generator, my um, inverter, and all of that. You have not told us whether, at the end of the day, those things were given back to you? Never. Graciously to God, the Honorable Court by Honorable Justice Ibrahim Buba gave a judgment in my favor, a ruling in my favor, at 10 million naira as exemplary damages until date i've not heard anything nothing whatsoever from them no compensation has been made ever since till date in suit fhc slash l slash c slash 538 of 2014 in the case of mr koliagu abunikeyan Prince Kletus Obu and others is admitted as Exhibit A. A total number of four petitions were called today, but only one case was heard. I'm glad that we witnessed the first case being called, and um, I think it behoves of me just to reassure the panel of the full cooperation of the state, therefore need all hands on deck to unravel a lot of things that has happened in our society particularly the incident of the 20th of October, 2020. The other three petitions were adjourned. The tribunal is of the view that the matter will be adjourned. Getting legal representation may be a difficult task for some. That's why the Nigerian Bar Association has put measures in place to help in that capacity. We have already offered that they will be willing to uh, send, uh, willing to represent such people at this panel, represent them for the, firstly helping them at, uh, put together a petition, and also helping them come to present the petition. As you can see, a lawyer is needed uh, in, uh, in, in fora like this. The next seating will be held at the same location on October 30th, 2020. It's the end of day one, and with 181 days left, the panel is calling on members of the public to bring their petition with evidence so that the panel can sit on it timelessly.
Victoria Idu, Channels Television News. Meanwhile, in Nikiti State, the Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice, Wale Fapounda, has assured residents of the Judicial Panel of Inquiry set up to investigate allegations of human rights violations and other forms of police brutality will be fair to all. Briefing journalists in Adwekiti, the state capital, the Commissioner says the panel has held some sessions behind closed doors while the public sessions will commence on November 2nd. According to him, only citizens with genuine cases of abuse are expected to approach the panel. The expectation of the state government is that the sittings of the judicial panel will give our youth an opportunity to speak openly about their experiences, to enable us to have a better understanding of the depth of the problem and most importantly, find a sustainable solution. Mr. Governor did also mention that the state government is aware that there are persons who have been victims of the protests. Such persons will also benefit from the sittings of the panel. This is in addition to police officers, a number of them who have been also victims of this violence in their line of duty. While the panels of inquiry began their work, some ravaging youths and others who cashed in on the NSAS protests to loot items are now being rounded up by the police. In Lagos, over 200 alleged looters have been arrested across the metropolis. The Commissioner of Police, Hakim Odumosu, explains that operatives embarked on a house-to-house -house search for all looted items. He called on members of the public to provide information that will lead to more arrests. Hundreds of suspected looters all line up on one side of the police headquarters in Lagos. On the other side are these vandalized items from warehouses and departmental stores across the metropolis. The State Commissioner of Police, Hakim Odumosu, itemizes some losses recorded and informed that efforts are being made to recover more looted items. As far as I'm concerned now, there's no end surface there. But the NSA people are responsible, the liable and responsible members public can sell these people that are here. No NSA person now will go and carry a television. None. No NSA person now will go and kill, kill. None. So they just I took in over that. And you know, when they miss with them, we need a lot of patience, a lot of intelligence, a lot of professionalism. According to the state police boss, this development also provided an opportunity for residents to lay claim on missing items. We have intelligence, we've sent our men out, where all police are taking now, we are recovering them and we are punishing them. They have gone out on that. These suspects are set to be charged. However, those that would be convicted would have to wait a while for their COVID-19 tests to be conducted and the results delivered before being sent to the correctional centers. In the nation's capital, the Director General of the National Youth Service Corps, Brigadier General Shraibu Ibrahim, is appealing to Nigerian youth to stop attacking NYC camps under the guise of looking for palliators. General Ibrahim laments the level of destruction by youths who were intercepted while carting away various items belonging to Corps members after invading the camp in the Federal Capital Territory. <laughs> The search for COVID-19 palliatives appears to be the driving force as rampaging youth comb the nation's capital. This time, their search takes them to the orientation camp of the National Youth Service Corps in Kubwa. But the individuals, including women, run out of luck as they are caught in the act of looting the NYSE orientation camp. <laughs> With the looted items retrieved, the Director General of the National Youth Service Corps bemoans the activities of the youth. We saw this on the social media, we flung over our stuff for them to come and see that we don't have panic. And when they saw of them came, they saw it and they left. And we were surprised today they came. 
chased the security uh, uh, policemen here and there. Some of them came with uh, jackknives to stab our uh, police and so on, and so on. So, but we thank God for the army and other civilians who have rescued the situation. The NYSC DG appeals to the youth to stop attacking orientation camps. NYC does not keep permitted. They should please not attack our camps. We are preparing for resumption November 10th so that these core members, as usual, will continue to, continue to get the training and then resume their contribution to our national development. Please, we don't keep any palliatives here. They should not attack our camps. The week had begun with some youths breaking into a warehouse at Guagualada Area Council on Monday. They justify their actions blaming hunger and starvation. The attack on the NYC orientation camp in Kubwa makes it the third area council to suffer such as the rampaging residents had last week made an unsuccessful attempt at the arts and culture center in the Abuja Municipal Area Council. Stay with the arrests. Police in Niger State have arrested 17 persons for allegedly inciting youths to carry out protests. As follows well suspected plans by some people to embark on street agitations despite the ban on public demonstrations by the state government in the wake of violence that trailed the NSAS protests. The Commissioner of Police, Adamu Usman, confirmed the arrests in a statement signed by the command's PRO, Wasiu Abiodun. Mr. Usman said many of those arrested were not from Niger State, but the suspects are currently under investigation while they will be charged to court for prosecution soon after. He then advised parents and guardians on the need to prevail on their wards and subjects to remain peaceful and shun any acts of lawlessness. The police commissioner, however, commended youths in the state for displaying high level of responsibility, calmness, perseverance and restraint in the face of the threats. It's also the end of the road for 78 people who have been arrested and convicted for violating the curfew imposed by the state government for arson and attempted arson and other offences following the NSAS protests in Asaba. Speaking with journalists at the state police headquarters in Asaba Delta State, the state commissioner of police, Hafiz Inua, thanked all law-abiding residents, assuring them that they can go about their normal businesses without fear of harassment. All the suspects have been tried and convicted, with some of them getting an option of fine. In Ondo State, the police have paraded 18 persons suspected to be part of those who carried out arson and looting during the NSARS protests. The State Commissioner of Police, Bolaji Salami, who briefed journalists at the State Command Headquarters in Akure, the state capital, described the looting in Okitibupa, Owo, Ore, Oda and Akure as horrendous. He vowed that the police will go after the remaining suspects with a view to bringing them to justice. The carnage suffered by the police command cannot be estimated so far. However, for our proactive nature, some of those who perpetrated these crimes are here with us, awaiting prosecution. We have suspect from about five locations, starting from World War, then uh, APC Secretariat in Akure. We have some from Ore, and uh, we arrested some in other division. And like I said, our sister agency, the military, arrested about three for us from uh, 32 Artillery Brigade Akure. One person has been reported dead during an attempt by some youths to raid the headquarters of the Nigerian Customs Service in Adamawa State. The victim is said to be among some of those who broke into the armory in an attempt to cart away arms and ammunition, but were engaged by security. <laughs> Despite the curfew imposed by the Adamawa state government, that has not stopped the looting spree across warehouses in the state. The looters turned out in their numbers targeting the federal government warehouses, the Adamawa state primary health care development agency, UNICEF store 
carting away various items including drains, hospital equipment and air conditioners. Some officials of the affected agencies react to the lootings. Now, uh, warehouses were, were looted, tractors were, were taken away, and uh, all the commodity association in Adama State have suffered. Um, right from Rifan, Nekas, Man, all the commodity association, all our warehouses were looted. <laughs> The controller of customs in Adamawa and Taraba states, while assessing the extent of damage, tells Channel Television that one life was lost while another got wounded and is in hospital receiving medical attention. We tried to act with caution. Unfortunately, I know there was a loss of life and one is in the hospital, not of the customs, but the hoodlums. And that occurred as we were about looting our armory that we can lay down our lives to protect the armory. Meanwhile, Governor Omar Fentiri has warned residents that indefinite curfew imposed on the state has not been relaxed. He is therefore asking security agencies to restore peace and ensure strict adherence to law and order, warning that further breach would not be tolerated. Meanwhile, the Taraba State Government says it will not rest until all looters of warehouses, government and private facilities in the state are arrested. The Deputy Governor, Haruno Manu, made this pledge when he visited sites of damaged facilities and looted warehouses to assess the level of damage. Two people are said to have died as a result of the stampede that occurred while the rampaging youths looted the warehouses. The destruction is massive. This is not protest. And uh, I want to say it clear that it's not protest. You have seen it. This is, uh, we just have some group of criminals that came to loot because what they have done is not just government facility. They have destroyed even private, uh, private businesses. And these are people that have worked hard to ensure that uh, they have their businesses. And uh, the, the sad aspect of it is uh, these are businesses that employed our citizens. Like the Red Star International School we went to, they destroyed everything. Not only cutted away more than 150 computers, but they make sure that they destroyed even the buses, the school buses that usually convey our children to school. And they have not stopped at that. They make sure that they destroy the school because they vandalize everything, you know. And these are, we have facilities there that usually house uh, the computer facilities that people that usually sit for jam examinations, you know. I mean, the, the, the destruction is massive. Here in Lagos, the governor, Babajide Sonwalu, has visited more areas affected by the NSARS protests. According to him, the exercise will help assess the extent of damages in those places with a view to bringing succor to the affected residents. Our correspondent, Titiola Abiriwu, reports. <laughs> Lagos State Governor Babachide Sonwolu continues his assessment of areas hit by violence and destruction of properties. This time, he makes his way to Fagba in Ifakoja, a local government area of the state. Fagba was one of the hotspots of the violence experienced last week, where lives were lost and several properties destroyed. Unhappy with the extent of damage, Governor Sonwolu sounds a note of warning to those fermenting trouble. If you know that you are not doing any work and that you are one of the people that has caused this trouble, we are giving you the final note because we are coming to clear this whole place. He then assures residents of the government's support as he announces compensation for all those affected by the attacks in the area. The level of destruction that I've seen here 
is, 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 is colossal. It's unfortunate, right? And the enumeration will start immediately by the two local government chairmen, by your CDC, and the ballet. All of you who come together. You are living in, in the same community. Wow. The visit becomes even more personal as Governor Sawolu visits his mother's house that was set on fire in the Surulere area of the state. His final stop of the day is the branch of ShopRite Supermart that was looted by rampaging youths also in the area. Titilayo, Haberiawo, Channel Television News. Our correspondent Titilayo Aberio will there. Meanwhile, some Southwest senators today visited the governor at the Lagos House Marina over the vandalization of infrastructure by rampaging youths who took advantage of the NSAS protests. The senators of the Lagos House included Ibikuli Amosu, representing Ogun Central, Uluremi Tinubu, Lagos Central, Solomon Adiola, Lagos West, Okwayemi Bamidele, Ikiti Central, Ajayi Borofis, Ondo North, Abiodun Olujimi, Ikiti South, Tolu Odebi, Ogun West, Lekon Mustafa, Ogun East, Adetumbi Olubumi, representing Ikiti North, among others. Speaking on behalf of the lawmakers, the Senate Deputy Leader, Senator Borofis, notes that they are deeply hurt by the extensive damage carried out in Lagos. We are working with government to ensure that those demands that require constitutional um, approval will be done by us expeditiously uh, in support of the demands of the youth. And also, we concerned about the gravity of the damage to lives and property done here in Lagos and maybe in other places. And we are going to move a motion with the Senate to urge the federal government to come into the assistance of Lagos State because the burden of the damage will be too much for Lagos alone to bear. In the heat of the violence that trailed the NSAS protest, several public buildings were targeted across the country. And in Lagos, a monument of the judiciary was not spared. Our correspondent, Dario Dua, takes a deeper look at the destruction and arson of the oldest judicial building in Nigeria and what it signifies for justice delivery in the country. The Igbushiri High Court is not just a courthouse. It is a monument with its existence dating back to when Lagos was known as a British protectorate. Rampaging youth broke into the court on Lagos Island and wreaked havoc inside out. Eyewitnesses say the arsonist spent hours in the court premises touching cars, buildings, documents and other valuables. The state chief judge, accompanied by other judges, is assessing the level of damage here, but can't put a figure to it yet. This is what is left of one of the courtrooms in Igbo Shere. Igbo Shere is the oldest and known to be one of the most recognizable judicial buildings in Nigeria. After the attack that left this place shattered, the judiciary is counting its losses. It says justice delivery may take a while, may be delayed, but it will bounce back in no time. We are working day and night now to ensure that we find alternative accommodation for our judges and magistrates, and they will soon start sitting. But this gives us this week for at least to be able to assess what we have. And thank God, like I told you, I was at TBS just now with my brother judges and the admin. And we have found some spaces where we could move some number of judges. As for records, you have seen, I mean, you were there. Fortunately, please let the whole world know this, that it is not all our records that are lost. No. So, and I thank God for that. In some of the key areas, we still have substantial part of our records intact, like our archives. In the probate registry, too, to a reasonable extent, some of our records are still intact. Apart from that, we are sending our words to the bar association and the public. We are going to reconstruct our case files. Where we cannot find our own, we call on both parties or all parties involved to submit their, their own uh, proceedings. The court workers are also around trying to salvage some documents 
piecing sensitive faults together. More than 30 buildings, including malls, banks, media houses, police stations, and other public assets were attacked and left in ruins within 48 hours of curfew imposed by the state government in the aftermath of the NSAS protest. Dari Ido, Channels Television News. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court has struck out two suits filed with the Bayelsa State Government against the Attorney General of the Federation, Akwai Bom and River States, over earnings from Soku Oil Wells. A seven-man panel of the court, headed by Justice Sylvester Unguta, struck out both suits after lawyers of the plaintiff, Mrs. Biriai Dambo and Kemsode Wodu, applied to withdraw the suits. At the mention of the first suit, which had the AGF and River State as defendants, Mr. Wodu told the court that his clients chose to approach the Supreme Court to, among others, stop the Federation Accounts Allocation Committee from deducting earnings due to Bielsa State from the Soku oil wells. He claims that the River State Government surreptitiously obtained a judgment at the Federal High Court without the knowledge of Bielsa State Government, in respect of which it, being Rivers, now lays claim to the Soku oil wells and earnings due from it. After listening to Mr. Wodu, the seventh panel of the Seven-man panel of the court insisted that there was no way the court could exercise jurisdiction over a case relating to a judgment given by a high court, in respect of which the Court of Appeal has not made a pronouncement. President Mahmoud Buhari has reappointed Professor Mahmoud Yakubu as the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, for a second term in office. The presidency in a statement today reveals that the president has transmitted a letter to the President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, seeking the Parliament's confirmation. The presidency says the decision is premised on the provision of Section 154, subsection 1 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Professor Yakubu, who was first appointed by President Buhari in November 2015, and if confirmed by the Senate, will serve the second term until 2025. In other news, the Minister of Niger Delta, Senator Godwin Akpavio, is lamenting what he calls gross inadequate budgetary allocation to the ministry to execute capital projects in 2021. Senator Akpavio, who is stating his position during a budget defense session in the Senate, is appealing for better funding for the ministry to execute its projects. Our correspondent, Linda Kigbe, has more. The annual ritual where heads of government agencies flood the National Assembly to defend their budget begins. It's been a slow start to the budget defense process because of the unrest in several cities, the FCT included, as rampaging residents besieged warehouses looking for palliatives. The Minister of Niger Delta is before the Oversight and Committee to defend his ministry's budget. The ministry has a total budget size of 26.5 billion naira for 2021, comprising 1.44 billion for personnel, 877.08 million for overhead, and 24 billion naira on capital projects. The minister, however, says the budgetary allocation to his ministry is inadequate to implement its capital projects for 2021. And the total sum of 26.5 million uh, for us, the ministry is considered very big because we had about 345 ongoing projects, but we had to uh, drop most of the ongoing projects, uh, particularly those that have not gone above 20 percent. The Minister of Niger Delta Affairs oversees the Niger Delta Development Commission, which has been under intense scrutiny following allegations of gross financial mismanagement and misappropriation of funds. The chairman of a Senate committee calls for a closed-door session to continue with the budget defense exercise. Thank you for coming to listen to the budget presentation. And uh, you, you may wish to excuse us. The Senate Committee on Interior is in another hearing room at the National Assembly where it receives the 2021 budgets of the Federal Fire Service and the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps. But the committee declines to question the heads of these agencies and their budget and the chairman in an interview explains why. We have the budget, there are explanations on how the funds were expended. If we want additional information, we'll inquire from them. But right now, some of the organizations are under attack. Some of the offices were 
bond down. So how do you expect us to hold them to ransom here while their jobs are on the line? There are no compelling issues for us to hold them longer than necessary. The budget defense sessions are expected to continue for the next four weeks as the National Assembly is in a race to pass the 2021 budget by December this year. Linda Akibi, Channels Television News. Staying with the lawmakers, the House of Representatives is querying the impact of international donor funds to Nigerians. This was part of the budget defense session which held when the House Committee on Civil Society Organizations and Development Partners met with the Minister of State for Finance. The House had taken a five-week plenary break last week to allow for the process to be concluded. Our correspondent Terry Kumi reports that lawmakers found on the revenue generation profile of some government agencies. For Minister of State for Budget and National Planning appears before the House Committee on Civil Societies and Development Partners. The focus is on international funding for various projects in the country. Do not agencies across the globe have been able to donate to this country in terms of projects over 10 trillion naira. So that is huge amount of money. And for us, you know, in the National Assembly, and other Nigerians, they hate so much about um, do not agencies um, activities in the country, but they can't really see, you know, the impacts. The projects are not visible. I don't receive funds, and I have said so. The ministry doesn't get funds. Nigeria does not qualify to receive funds because Nigeria is not classified as a very poor country. The minister's explanation still doesn't sit well with the committee. How do they get those funds? How do you even transmit those funds to the country? We want to come with $1 million. How does that $1 million get into the country? And how do they appropriate that $1 million? In the area of their interest, where they want to intervene, I'm, when I say area of interest, that is like in the sector. If it's education, they have to meet with the Minister of uh, Education. It is based on education's needs that they will intervene. The House Committee on Healthcare Services also meets with the Regional Center for Oral Health Research and Training Initiatives for Africa. While expressing displeasure with the federal government for underfunding the agency, members of the committee raised questions on the provisions of the budget presented by the agency. Construction provision of network, road network within the around the center. What type of road can you execute with two million naira? If you're only making 10 million naira for the country, and here you are presenting additional 405 million in expenditure. The center is not meant to generate, by its law establishing, to generate revenue. It was an idea of the GG before me to have a dental clinic whereby when the patient comes for biopsy, we do extraction fillings, we do manual surgeries, and we do facial reconstruction. The House of Representatives is also asking Nigerians to be wary of the kind of drugs they purchase following the looting of a warehouse belonging to the National Agency for Food, Drugs, Administration and Control in Kaduna State, where seized, fake and expired drugs were said to have been stored and awaiting destruction. Terry Ikumi, Channels Television News. Governor Nyesun Wike says the River State Cassava Processing Company, a joint venture company with Dutch government and Shell Petroleum Development Company, will be set for commissioning by the end of this year. The governor said this when the board members and partners of the company visited him at Government House in Port Harcourt, saying he believes it will upscale the socio-economic outlook of River State. The com Our correspondent Jeffrey Ozono reports. It's the project briefing meeting by board members and partners of the River State Cassava Processing Company to intimate Governor Nyeson Wike on their level of preparedness ahead of his commissioning. The, national the joint venture company owned by the River State Government, the Dutch Government and Shell, located in Afamino Yugo local government area, is projected to process 45,000 metric tons of cassava tubers to thousands of metric tons of cassava flour per annum and in turn create thousands of direct and indirect jobs across the agro value chain, including livelihood for 3,000 smallholder farmers. It will engage over 3,000 youths in the cassava food chain and has the potential to put the youths out of the streets by way of employment. 
It will also generate foreign exchange for the state and enhance our GDP. We are here to keep you posted with the status of the project, its attendant benefits to the state, where we are now, when it will be commissioned, our challenges and encumbrances, and the way forward. We will have a direct employment of 150 people, but through the multiplier effect that exists in the agricultural sector, 15,000 people will have some form of economic engagement or the other as a result. We are going to be processing 45,000 metric ton of cassava tubers into 12,500 metric ton of cassava flour, which is going to be the end product. For Governor Wiki, the company upon completion will upscale the economy of the state through job creation. But he also hopes that in future, the company will be fully driven by the private sector, as River State Government currently holds 70% share. This is a key for us to move forward. I commend you, and I believe that uh, River State Government will have done well to make sure that this uh, company uh, is still a share has not run away. Uh, that score has not run away. If they have run away, we have the capacity to make sure that it works. The River State Cassava Processing Company is an additional drive by the state government to diversify the state's economy, especially with the disruption caused by the COVID-19 pandemic across the world. From Port Harcourt, Jeffrey Uzongo, Channels Television News. In the wake of the NSAS protest, the governor of Ogun State, Dakbo Abiodun, has called for policing and the regulation of social media space to curb the spread of fake news. The governor made the call at a peace consolidation meeting organized by the state government in Abeokuta, the state capital. That meeting had traditional rulers, security agencies, religious and youth leaders discussing human rights issues and police reforms. Traditional rulers, religious leaders, security agencies and community members have come together for what is seen as an emergency meeting in Ogun State. Issues of human rights, restoring the people's confidence in the police, youth empowerment and the need for peace and unity are issues expected to be discussed. And the participants bear their thoughts on the issues as it affects them. We need to know and speak the truth to ourselves that it is time we go beyond relying on security trust fund for the financing of our security in Nigeria. The, the National Assembly and the uh, executive arm of government must consider reasonable budgeting for security financing in our country. And at the same time, we are appealing to our youth to please listen and to calm down and to have another second thought because we don't have another country because Oku State, Nigeria belong to all of us. And as we remain standing, let us welcome the number one citizen of the Beto State. The arrival of the state governor, Dapwa Biodon, shifts the gear of the discourse to reforming the police, which the deputy inspector of police says is top priority. We are going to continue to be proactive in our approach to issues. Even as I am here today, the idea is to continue to have the trust and confidence restored back that you can call us and have confidence that we are going to respond. Please, I want to assure all of you that it is going to be a better tomorrow for the Nigeria police. For the governor, sowing seeds of discord must not be allowed to permeate the society as a result could be catastrophic. We watch out and, and avoid posting and reposting fake videos, provocative statements, clips on social media, and, and refrain from unpatriotic acts that fan or embers our disunity and discord. People have be, they've gone into the business of, 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 of sowing a seed of discord in this country. This country will remain one, either they like it or not, and we'll have peace in this country. To shape a better future for the country, suggestions from events like this should be collated and addressed. 
Coronation P Insurance PLC has again been restating its commitment to its customers against the backdrop of the recent destruction of properties and killings witnessed in the aftermath of the NSAS protests across the country. The company, formerly known as WAPIC Insurance, is assuring its clients of proactive and prompt response to their claims. In a statement, the chief executive officer of the company, Yinka Adekoya, says the last thing their clients want is a painful and challenging claims process in the face of the loss in human life and damage to properties and assets. Part of the statement reads, We believe that insurance companies must ensure their clients do not have to wait for assistance after a disaster occurs by proactively collating information of damage and losses, as well as responding to claims with speed and precision. We're well aware that our customers are dealing with numerous difficulties at this time, and the last thing they want is a painful and challenging claims process. It further states, we want our customers to return to their normal way of life as soon as possible and have, and have put in place a claims response platform for real-time communication and easy sharing of loss evidence to fast-track claims processing. The company wants its clients to use its dedicated helplines for emergencies and speak to its experts for advice and assistance on what to do next. It says Coronation Insurance channels are available 24-7 so the clients can make inquiries and report claims seamlessly and minimize physical visits. This news is next. Here's Anne Mawodo. Thank you, Amarachi. Hello and welcome to Business News. The Purchasing Managers Index of Nigeria's manufacturing sector has fallen for the sixth consecutive month, and that's after contracting to 49.4, according to the PMI survey report for the month of October, which was released today by the Central Bank. The latest reading indicates for slowing contraction in the manufacturing sector, which started since May this year. Out of the 14 subsectors surveyed, seven subsectors recorded expansion above the 50 points threshold in production level, one subsector maintained current level, while six subsectors recorded decline this month. Meanwhile, the PMI for the non manufacturing sector stood at 46.8 within the month, indicating its seventh consecutive month contraction as 11 subsectors declined, while three out of the 17 subsectors surveyed reported growth. The federal government says it has commenced implementation of economic sustainability plan with the payment of 30,000 Naira grant to 333,000 artisans across the country. A statement from the office of the vice president explains that the payments are made to set off verified beneficiaries of the support scheme, a track under the micro, small, and medium enterprises survival fund. The beneficiaries are being drawn from the FCT, Abuja, Lagos, Undo, Kaduna, Borono, Kanu, Bochi, Anambra, Abia, Rivers, Plateau, and Delta State. The federal government's 2.3 trillion Nara economic sustainability plan consists of fiscal, monetary, and sectoral measures to enhance local production, support businesses, create jobs, and provide succor to Nigerians, especially to the most vulnerable. Lagos State Governor Mr. Babajide Sonwolu has approved the full resumption of operations of both food markets and non-food markets in the country. They are now to open daily. In a statement announcing this, the Commissioner for Local Government and Community Affairs, Dr. Wali Ahmed, says that the Governor took the decision to further enhance trade and commerce and mitigate the hardship of recent times and ensure that Lagosians can recover very fast. Dr. Ahmed pointed out that Governor Sonwolu has also advised the continuous observance of all safety protocols. He says that traders and their customers must adhere strictly to the COVID-19 protocols for their own safety and the citizenry at large. Let's head to the stock market where 46 gainers and only two losers went to the domestic stock market, coming out in positive posture for the fourth consecutive day since its rebound on Thursday last week while posting its biggest gain so far for the month. Let's see the closing numbers for today. Thank you for joining us on the Stock Market Report.
The domestic stock market appears to be shrugging off current developments in the country as investors extend bargain hunting for some high-value equities with the bulls still in control on the NSC. As a result, the benchmark performance indicator of equities climbed higher by 0.7% against Monday's figure, while total value rose further above the 15 trillion naira level following the 106 billion naira gain recorded today. Tuesday's bullish performance, which comes amid the release of more third quarter earnings results, was characterized by increased appetite by investors for the big banks such as GT Bank, as well as Stamic IBTC, which posted an impressive result in its nine-month financial performance. Now, take a look at the sectoral chat. You can see that investors are keen on buying stocks across all the five key counters of the equities market. Meanwhile, traders say they expect the release of more positive corporate earnings results to sustain the positive trend for the rest of the week. And that's it on the Stock Market Reports. I'm Bisi Adebayo. Thanks for watching Business News tonight. I'm Anne Mwawadu. It's back to you, Marachi. Thanks a lot, Anne. The World Health Organization has informed that the number of daily COVID-19 deaths in Europe rose by 40% when compared to the previous week. WHO spokeswoman Dr. Margaret Harris says France, Spain, the UK, the Netherlands and Russia accounted for the majority of cases, which increased by a third. Here's Simon Pusey with more international news and around the world in five. Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. Russia has brought in tighter restrictions to try to stem a surge in coronavirus cases, making the wearing of face masks compulsory in all crowded places, including public transport. Russia's consumer health watchdog also advises regional governments to close bars and restaurants between 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. On Tuesday, Russia reported a daily record of 320 deaths from the virus. Monday saw the number of new infections hit a new record, too, of 17,347 over 24 hours. The country has the world's fourth highest number of COVID-19 cases after the U.S., India and Brazil. The U.S. Senate has confirmed Judge Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court in a victory for President Donald Trump a week before the presidential election. I, Amy Coney Barrett, do solemnly swear... Justice Barrett took the oath of office at the White House alongside President Trump. The Republicans won in a vote to approve the judge, overcoming the unified opposition of Democrats. Her appointment seals for the foreseeable future a 6-3 conservative majority on the top U.S. judicial body. Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden called the move rushed and unprecedented. My fellow Americans, even though we judges don't face elections, we still work for you. It is your constitution that establishes the rule of law and the judicial independence that is so central to it. The oath that I have solemnly taken tonight means at its core that I will do my job without any fear or favor and that I will do so independently of both the political branches and of my own preferences. At least seven people have been killed and more than 50 injured by a bomb attack on a religious school in the Pakistani city of Peshawar. <laughs> Hospital officials say those killed were young men aged between 20 and 30. Dozens of others were injured, including four under the age of 13. The motive for the attack on a Quran study class is unclear. The northern city of Peshawar, close to the Afghan border, has seen some of the worst of the violence during the Taliban insurgency in recent years. Thousands of protesters marched in Bangladesh earlier against the images being displayed in France of the Prophet Muhammad. The demonstrators were supporters of the Islamic constitution movement in Bangladesh and marched towards the French embassy in Dhaka before the police stopped them. The protests come amid an escalating row between France and many in the Muslim world. France has warned its citizens living or traveling in several Muslim-majority countries to take extra security precautions. A judge in Bolivia has annulled the arrest warrant which has been issued for ex-president Evo Morales last year for alleged sedition and terrorism. Mr. Morales is living in exile after leaving Bolivia in November last year amid mass protests over allegations of vote rigging in the presidential election. He said he would return to Bolivia if his mass party won the rerun of the election, which it did on the 18th of October. 
European Union Chief Negotiator Michel Barnier has resumed talks in London with his British counterpart as the two sides try to strike a last-minute trade agreement. Are we nearing the finish line? It's less than 10 weeks before the United Kingdom leaves the EU, but the two sides are still trying to clinch a deal that would govern nearly a trillion dollars in annual trade before the informal membership, known as the transition period, ends on December the 31st. The European Commission said talks in London will run until Wednesday before resuming in Brussels on Thursday. The military leader of Sudan's Sovereign Council has denied being blackmailed into normalizing ties with Israel. That's despite the U.S. brokered deal coinciding with the White House removing economically struggling Sudan from a list of state sponsors of terrorism. In his first public comments since it was announced on Friday in a call with U.S. President Donald Trump and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Abdul Fattah al-Burhan said the deal was legitimate and benefits both parties. And finally, a four-legged robot dog known as Spot has explored the area around Chernobyl's nuclear reactor number four, the site of the world's worst nuclear accident. Scientists from the University of Bristol brought robotic platforms, including Spot, to the Chernobyl nuclear power plant to test their ability to act under radiation conditions. According to the scientists, equipment to measure radiation levels can be attached to Spot's back, which will allow conducting radiation surveys remotely. It's hoped the experience at Chernobyl will help the team to make progress designing robotic platforms for nuclear industry purposes. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the Channel Studios in Lagos. Thank you, Simon. Hello and welcome to Sports News. We begin with football. FIFA President Gianni Infantino has tested positive for COVID-19. Infantino, who is 50 years of age, has reported mild symptoms and is in self-isolation and will quarantine for at least 10 days. Barcelona President... Joseph Maria Bertomeu and his entire board have handed in their resignations and will leave the club. This followed confirmation today that the club's request to delay the vote of no confidence on him had been rejected by the authorities in the region. In the UEFA Champions League, Joshua Kimmich volleyed in a 79-minute winner as title holders Bayern Munich battled past host Lokomotiv Moscow 2-1 to extend their winning run in the competition to 13 consecutive games. Portugal forward Felix scored twice as Atletico Madrid edged past RB Salzburg 3-2. Real Madrid came from a two-goal deficit to play a thrilling 2 all draw with Borussia Mönchengladbach. Manchester City outclassed Olympic Marseille 3-0 for their second win of the campaign. Atalanta fought back from two goals down to pull a thrilling draw with Ajax Amsterdam, while Liverpool defeated FC Midland 2-0. Also in football, nine Lazio players have been missing from training, leaving the club's Champions League preparations in chaos. Only 12 players trained with the manager today, ahead of Wednesday's Champions League clash against Club Bruges. That's it on Sports News. I'm Arachi, back to you. Thanks, Salomide. And the main news again. The will of justice today started to roll for the victims of police brutality as the Lagos State Panel of Inquiry began hearing of cases with one person testifying. That's it on the news at 10 tonight. Thanks for watching. I'm Amarachi Ubani. Good night. Stay safe.